Hello beautiful people, happy Saturday. Welcome to my practical application of astrology and personal story share. This weekend I decided to switch things around. So actually my astrological forecast for next week will be coming out tomorrow. So if that's the one you're waiting, to, uh, waiting for, stay tuned and it will be released tomorrow. So I'm going to start as I usually start. I'm just going to name the main aspects that were taking place this week, which were impacting us on an individual and collective level. And then I'm going to share how this has been showing enough for me so we started a week this week which we just ending now with the third last square between mercury and neptune then on tuesday we had sun trying to uranus and uh, mars sextile to saturn then on wednesday the 10th sun squared the nodes lunar nodes and then on the 11th on thursday we had the new moon in capricorn number one because we do have four lunations in capricorn this year and at the same time we had venus was trying to Chiron in Aries. Uh, then yesterday on Friday we had Mars trying to Jupiter. Today uh, Mercury is going to re-enter Capricorn and tomorrow Venus will try North Node. So there has been tons of aspects taking place. Uh, as I said, I haven't, I haven't actually recorded my astrological forecast for next week, but there's a lot happening next week as well, as we know, especially to do with Pluto moving back in the sign of Aquarius, but that's for tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, introspect and reflect on what actually took place this week before we dive into the Pluto in Aquarius theme, which I'll be covering in the um, astrological forecast tomorrow. Uh, so as I mentioned, the center stage actually of this week was the new moon in Capricorn. New moon actually, uh, even though it was a new moon, I decided to call it the paradoxical moon because uh, this new moon uh, is closing a lot of old cycles. Pluto was on the 29 degrees and the moon itself was the skip step. It was squaring the lunar nodes, telling us that there is something we need to resolve and it's to do with Capricorn topic. It's to do with what's, be, what's been going on in our life and becoming conscious to us since 2008 when Pluto first moved into the sign of Capricorn. So... I personally, and I'm going to share what took place for me, I decided to have a channeling session a day before. I will put the links uh, for uh, the lady I had the channeling with in a description. I highly recommend it. I had never experienced anything like that in my life and I already listened to it twice and the channeling is so multidimensional as it is when you connect with being from these beings from a different dimension that there are so many layers to unpack and run and reveal and it just activates something with you something within your psyche that is then going to be working on these topics so a day before capricorn new moon i had my channeling session which completely blown me blown me away and as i said i'm still integrating these things and it doesn't get lost on me <laughs> that a lot of things that was obviously coming up throughout the channeling was connected to the past and connected to these capricornian topics you know what is the structure of this reality that we are experiencing and you know what is the attachment to it and also what everything is still unresolved from this past that is actually from the subconscious point of view creating our future creating our present and our future and we can see this very clearly um, manifested in our collective reality how everything that's been unresolved throughout our human history and collective experience is playing out it's all playing out it's coming to the surface even though we have changed we evolved but there are still these unhealthy patterns that are still becoming very conscious to us and more and more more and more of this is going to be coming up to the surface this year because of pluto ending with capricorn pluto is going to move into aquarius next week uh, and it's going to be there for for the majority of the year, apart from the two and a half months when Pluto is going to stay, uh, you know, retrograde back into Capricorn and stay there until November, from September till November. So it's a very short period of time. So predominantly this year, Pluto is already moving into Aquarius, as I've been talking about in my astrological videos. And this is literally pushing us forward to try to correct the past, not even correct, that's not the right word, but try to redefine and rebuild, rebuild these foundations that our reality is, is built on. So what was coming up for me, I mean, there are so many things that were coming up for me throughout this channeling and uh, afterwards, and they are still coming up for me. But the main topic that was very, very 
like clear and obvious and draw home was uh, the, the ancestor healing, the inner child healing, because this is the foundation of your life. Because as much as, and I mean, I, I you know, I can uh, admit to myself that there is definitely a level of resistance. Like, why do I have to go over that? Why do I have to heal that? Why do I have to do that? Because we are we are made of what we came from, right? Like it's all present in our, in our life, in our physical body, in our consciousness, in our patterns, in our belief system, like that, which came before is impacting us, whether we like it or not, whether we believe it or not, it's impacting us from conscious or subconscious standpoint of view. And uh, also the inner child. And as I mentioned, I've been doing this inner child course, uh, I started last month. It's going very slowly with my ego. I was like very happy, uh, you know, like, oh, yeah, let's dive in and be done with it before the end of the year. Well, not so fast because all these layers, they are coming up to the surface. They need to be integrated. It's not a quick a quick fix. It's not a fi things that can be done quickly, which is the same thing with, with our collective experience. Everything that's going on in the world is not something that can be fixed overnight. It's not something that can be just done and, okay, let's just move on, which is why these things are happening gradually even though now they're happening at the accelerated uh, rate and then, like I said we entered this year with moon in the sign of Virgo this entire year will be with the flavor of Virgo which is this learning and adjusting making um corrections as we go along learning from our mistakes and that's why all these things that um are unresolved on our individual and collective level uh, are becoming obvious to us. So we have the opportunity to to uh, remedy them or modify them. So coming back to this ancestral and uh, inner child stuff, uh, that is the foundation of our life because it created who you are and the experience you have in. And doesn't matter how much uh, self grow and healing we do, if we don't get to the core of things, these things will always be there and they will be still operating from our subconscious conscious point of view and this is something which um, has been becoming very clear for me too uh, that like for example I wake up most morning feeling really sad feeling really sad feeling really down and I'm like there is no reason for it like I meditate going to sleep I meditate like I listen to meditation first thing in the morning I you know usually make sure to get enough hours sleep like well what is enough but again this is questionable like, because it's different for different people, but like what I feel is what I need, right? With regards to sleep, but still every morning I wake up and I have this heaviness in my heart, this sadness and uh, feeling like, you know, just, just sad. And I, I never understood that. And I'm like, well, why do I feel this way? You know, there's nothing that really happened to me, you know, like not recently anyway, that I should be feeling so sad about at the end of the day, I'm in this beautiful environment, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, just, uh, enjoying uh, Mexico in winter. I mean, what else can I ask for? Doing doing what I love, uh, you know, doing what I feel is my purpose, self-actualizing, all this kind of stuff. So why there is this heaviness and this sense of sadness? And of course, there could be multiple reasons for that. Uh, you know, one of them being, well, what's going on around us in the world, because we are all connected. We are all connected to the same source. We are all part of the same human collective consciousness. So whatever is happening in the world, it doesn't matter where it is, it's going to impact everyone in one way or another, because also of the quantum, you know, like the things that are happening somewhere are impacting things that are happening elsewhere and stuff like that. I'm not a physicist, so obviously I'm not going to try to pretend I understand the whole concept of it but there there are explanations why people are being affected even scientifically right but also is this thing that we all inherited and we carry in that potentially are still lying unresolved and i know till swan one of the people i follow spiritual teachers she keeps talking about it a lot she's been talking about it last year and she started this year talking about it also how how it is so essential at this time in our human evolution to do ancestor healing and i think a lot of people myself included we get overwhelmed because a lot of people don't even know who were their ancestors and where they came from and you know like oh where do i start you know and it's just so overwhelming we don't even want to start we just go like nah you know it's just too much I already have so much on my plate so much going on in my life like I don't have time for that but I feel my understanding and the realizations I've been getting because that was my first reaction like what do you mean ancestor healing I don't know nothing about my ancestors past my grandparents right and you know all of them are gone by this stage 
So I'm like, I wouldn't even know where to start. And why do I need to do that? Why do I need to know that? But what I feel is actually the most important aspect of that, that we can all recognize patterns, patterns that are playing out in our family, you know, within our parents, within our siblings, and also within our own personal life. We can see the patterns and these patterns are showing us what is the thing that is unresolved. You know, what is this thing? Because like also my understanding is you are born into the family obviously by the free will choice of the soul, but there is a reason for it, which, you know, a lot of people can get triggered about and might not like hearing, but there is a reason for it. One of the reasons is that this family carries gifts that you on a soul level would like to embody to help you on your evolutionary path, you know, whatever the gifts are. But then you as a soul and with all the experience that you've had and all the gifts you bring in with you, with your uniqueness, you have gift to offer this, you know, this bloodline, this family line, whatever, uh, to, to heal certain patterns and dysfunctional dynamics or wounding or uh, suffering or whatever. And, you know, like we are all connected. So obviously one family impacts another family, that another family that that impacts the neighborhood, that impacts the city, that impacts the country, that impacts the world. You know, I mean, we all connect it, but it all starts with, we all have to start somewhere. And where do we start? Well, we start with ourselves. And then I also see the connection between the inner child healing and obviously the ancestor healing because we, we come from somewhere and that which is born into that somewhere is the child. And majority of people on this planet, <laughs> and I mean, maybe not the kids, these new kids, because especially if they're born to conscious parents who are trying to do better but i mean again not ditching that our parents didn't they just did the best they could at the time and they didn't know anything else because this is what it was you know there was that external authority that said this is how you do it this is the correct way this is how they were being brought up themselves or you know this is how they were being uh not nurtured themselves or whatever it is again this is not about right and wrong or pointing finger or judgment but that which the child is born into forms the child so then you know that's where it, this these patterns get perpetuated right like um I can share from my family for example I come from a family where you know like people that are very practical so to speak if you can put that label on it and when I was growing up when I was a child and I had dreams just like everybody does and I wanted to I don't know be a singer I know I liked I used to like to sing and or I you know there was a time in my life when uh, me or even my little sister wanted to play instrument and my mom would say don't be so stupid we don't have money for that and nobody in our family ever has done that so that's it. You know, straight away, we were being put in a box like this hasn't been done before in our family. So why would you do it? You know, why should you do it? It's not something that's normal for our family. But then again, how do we know? How do we know that 5, 10, 20 generations ago there wasn't someone? Because if there is the desire in you, and this is also something that I always try to make people aware, if there is a desire in you, then obviously it's coming from somewhere and there is a reason for it. So what if there was God knows how many generations ago somebody who had that desire but because of the same story, of the same wounding, or even worse, because obviously all this generation ago, the world was <laughs> even less conscious than it is now, because of the environment conditioning, they, 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 they made that person, the embodiment of the soul, to believe that you're limited, you can't do it. you know. And then the external world would then project this onto that person, and then the person, one day adopted into that belief system, they found a proof for it, just like how it works with the law of attraction. You know, whatever you believe, whatever, you know, you are in resonance with, you, act you attract the proof for it. So going back to these things that, you know, took place in my personal childhood, where I had to, you know, disassociate or due to experiences, shut down emotionally and not express myself in my authenticity because the environment didn't support that behavior or that need or that desire or whatever it was and I'm sure most people can resonate because everybody had an experience in childhood with whatever felt natural to them in whichever you know uh, a circle of people it was whether we at home school you know or somewhere it was being considered as this is wrong and you should not be doing that and I'm not saying obviously you know we still have to put safe boundaries with regards to raising children and stuff to keep them safe because they're little and they don't understand the totality of the world because Pisces they just came from the source they think everything is a source right 
But anyway, I don't even know like how to put this into words correctly to to make sense out of it because reality is somehow getting more and more vast and it's hard to pinpoint and put it into words. What am I trying to say? But what am I trying to say is that there are so many aspects of every single human being right now on the planet that has been uh, suppressed and, uh, you know, then we... um, we react to our uh, current experiences from that point of view, the point of view that got frozen in time or got conditioned or got hurt or got traumatized or got made to believe that this is how it is. And this is something which, you know, we can look at the ancestor thing as a, you know, like, oh, what it has to do with the inner child. But all these ancestors were even inner children. So all these unresolved patterns, they are being passed on from one generation to another and impacting the next child because that's how you're born into every family as a baby as a child so this is what was brought to my consciousness to my attention through this channeling which actually i was meant to have on january 1st but it wasn't the right time so things got rescheduled you know due to external circumstances and then it happened when it happened on 10 1 you know 110 whatever and there was a reason for it because it was perfectly in alignment uh, with with this energy, with the energy of this week, this Mercury square to the Neptune, Mercury still in a sign of Sagittarius. He is moving back into the sign of Capricorn today when I'm recording this, but at the time of the new moon and, you know, for all this week until today, Mercury was in a sign of Sagittarius. What are these stories? It's all about these stories, about the stories we are attached to and we bought into that we keep perpetuating. And these are stories that were passed on to us from people who believe the stories they were being told. And this is what created this this continuous suffering, this continuous suppression and this continuous uh, disassociation and suppression and fragmentation of human soul where we had to reject so many aspects of ourselves until it got to the point where, you know, people lost the sense of who they are. Most people, like a lot of people, don't know who they are. They don't even know what what they want and what they believe because we are so, uh, over this, I don't know how many centuries we became so programmed that we lost, we lost it. We lost the sign of ourselves, that soul got so made to feel so small when in human incarnation we were being put in such a small box that that we think that all there is that all there is so with these uh, aspects that been taking place and i feel this mercury square to neptune plays such an important role because mercury is how we identify reality how we communicate and how we then create connection because mercury trans libra connection to the other and aquarius who is your tribe you know with whom you can be your individual self and that's how we get more information and the whole cycle you know this grand uh, air trine which uh, help us to have a human experience which we are obviously identifying and putting labels on and all these kind of things. But then with all these activations with the nodes, you know, with the um, with the sun being the square to the nodes, so the new moon being the skip step, the square to the nodes in conjunction with Pluto, and the sun is just about to have a conjunction with Pluto the day when both sun and Pluto moves into Capricorn next week on the 20th. And apart from that, we also have uh, the trine from Venus, the rule of the resolution node at the time, because now Pluto is moving away. When it moves into Aquarius, there will be no more uh, square from Pluto to the nodes. But at the time of the new moon, there was. And it was all pointing to the south node in Libra, the other, because we were being made to believe that there is this hierarchy, that there is this hierarchy in this society which makes somebody better than someone else. So there isn't really a equality, there really isn't the justice. But Venus trans Aquarius, um, Venus Libra, and Pluto is moving into Aquarius, and with this new moon in Capricorn, and as I was really trying to emphasize in my astrological forecast last week about this new moon in Capricorn, This entire year is about Capricorn. It is the year number eight, which uh, holds the frequency of Saturn and Jupiter. Uh, It's also the infinity symbol. It's the unlimited potential. But whatever you believe, you manifest. Jupiter manifests Saturn, right? So that which we are manifesting is in many, many ways impacted 
by that which came before, the Capricorn, the system, the structure of the reality we bought into, we think that this is how it is and we think it's solid. But Saturn is in Pisces. There was actually a sextile between uh, Mars and Saturn. And Mars is the ruler of the North Node and Saturn is in Pisces. Saturn was the ruler of the new moon in Capricorn in conjunction with Pluto. Saturn is still ruler of Pluto until uh, the 20th. So Venus, the rule of the South Node, the Resolution Node, and Venus now being in a sign of Sagittarius still, for the time being, she's just about to move into the sign of Capricorn. Or has she already? No, she's moving into Capricorn at 23rd. She hasn't yet. Okay, she's still in Sagittarius. Venus was making a trine to both Chiron and, and uh, um, North Node. Right? Yes, no, no. Oh, yeah, she's making the trine, exact trine tomorrow. So Venus is making trine to those two. And of course, all these aspects that were uh, in effect during the new moon in Capricorn are still in effect. You know, even the ones that took place before, they're still in effect. Because this is an energy that's going to guide us throughout this entire year. And I made three videos free videos about the Capricorn new moon because I've done a collaboration with my astrology friend Adrian and we did the chart analysis where we gave people something to look at while we're talking about it and also uh, with my uh, soul sister Marisa we pulled cards on this and the story was very clear and this lunation literally is kick-starting us for this entire year because we open in and close in 2024 with the new moon in Capricorn but the energy will be very different at the end of the year because uh, Pluto will be already in a sign of Aquarius and it will be trying in the south node in Libra so I'm just repeating myself from my previous videos, but what everything has to take place in order for this trying to happen. And it will happen. I mean, these things are going to happen. They already happened. You know, there is already a chart that exists that can show you that. So this is where we really starting to tap. And I already was talking about it last week. We are really starting to tap into this multidimensionality of our experience. The more the the more people are awakening and reconnecting with their own essence with their higher self and the, the more that there are these glitches in matrix and everything is happening simultaneously we are getting a deeper understanding of of this reality of this multi-dimensional reality and how nothing is really linear and all there are all these unlimited possibilities and of how this can manifest for you because you decide because you choose but in order for us to to become the magician, to become the conscious manifester with all these, you know, all these elements available to us, all these pentacles, wands and swords and uh, caps, all these elements available to us, we need to know how to use them. And that's what Capricorn is about, is the self-mastery and how we're going to get there through Virgo learning and adjusting and this is something which my friend really been pointing out to uh, to me about the mistakes we beat ourselves up when we make a mistake because again we were being conditioned to believe we need to be perfect you need to get it right 100 percent of the time but we know that doesn't work because no baby is perfect you know, I mean, it is perfect in its perfection, but it's it, it, when babies are born, they can't walk, they can't talk, they can't make their own dinner, they can't dress themselves, you know, so when we look at it from the point of what is ex expected of us societally, the baby is not perfect, it's lacking, because it doesn't know anything, it's like, you know, how are you going to go and make your money, right? At this stage, anyway, which is which, which you laugh, we, we, you know, we will laugh about it. We know it's completely irrational, but that's who you are for your higher self. You are a baby, you know. For each of us, we have our higher self. We have have our guides, and uh, this is how we are looked at. This is how the universe looks at us, you know. Here, having this human experience because everything is connected, and it looks at us. They learning. They're trying to get it right. There are no mistakes because every mistake op gives an opportunity for learning. But in many cases, it's very hard for us to forgive ourselves for that because straight away we are being judged and criticized by the external and then we adopt this inner judge and critic within ourselves so we do it before anybody else does. So by the time somebody says something nasty to us, we already had the experience internally, which is why we attract the external experience because we've already said all these things to ourselves. Like, yeah, I'm this, I'm that, you know, shouldn't have done that, shouldn't, couldn't, you know, wouldn't, whatever. But then we just, we just cancel the opportunity for learning because every mistake, which like my friend pointed out to me, mistake 
it was okay. It was like the take that didn't took hold, right? Miss take. <laughs> it's an opportunity for you to retake it because now you have the knowing, you have the uh, you have the experience of what happens if you do it this way, right? So there is no such a thing as mistake. There is no mistake. Nothing is random. Nothing is coincidence. I keep saying this in every video because everything is happening exactly as it needs to for us to learn. Now, whatever you came here to learn, that obviously depends on your path. But collectively, we can see what we're learning. <laughs> we're learning. Well, we know what we don't want. We know what we don't want. We just don't know how to create what we want. But it all starts with every single one of us, because behind every single one of us, there are lines of ancestors. There are lines of people that came before us. And within every single one of us, there is the child. There is that inner child that for many of us, it got, didn't get what it needed, didn't get nurtured, you know, in a way that was that was needed for the child, because child is all about Leo, it's all about authenticity, and majority of us were put in a box, you know, they put us in school schooling system that said, this is what you are expected to be, and become, and how you're supposed to behave, and this is what you're supposed to learn, it's all this copy-paste, copy-paste, like, how can 20 children learn the same thing in the same way, in the same speed? And why would they even want to? It's not even relevant to half of them or more, you know? So this is what I mean. We were being put into the, bo the box, literally the entire system in constructed in a way for, for, peop for literally for, for people who, are, who, who don't have soul, who don't have, you know, who don't have their own guiding system. So somebody, Capricorn, the external Capricorn is saying, don't worry, I'll tell you how to live your life. I tell you who you should be, how you should, you know, be, behave, what you should believe, what you should think, and what you should be working towards, and what should be your goal, and all of it, all of it. And over, you know, over these uh, generations, generations, and generations, it became so normal to us because everybody's been doing it all this time because of this suppression of the soul, suppression of the inner child, suppression of the authenticity, that we stop questioning it. And now we just uh, check out. Now we just check out and, uh, you know, like uh, disassociate or use uh, substances to not having to have to feel nothing. And I'm not saying that, you know, I have it all figured out. I'm still struggling with my own disassociation where I'm emotionally shut down when it comes to certain things. And this is what I'm working on. And I'm being transparent because nobody has it all figured out. Still, everyone, even the greatest spiritual teachers, they still working things out because this is what we came here to do. This is the school of life. And it doesn't make anybody better or worse. It just makes you human. And this is where the Virgo is, is here to support us, to help us see that actually Virgo was never about perfection. This is something that we were conditioned to believe that you are supposed to be perfect and never make any mistake. Otherwise, there's something wrong with you. But actually, Virgo is about when we look at the higher vibration, as I mentioned before, it's about the hero's journey. It's about the that something, the tool that is supporting you, how you get in towards that self-mastery, the self-growth, this Capricorn, you know, the sense of self, the sense of uh, your true authority within the divine power within you which is creating your experience you creating your experience but most people don't believe that they think there is something external there is that that person you know in the power that is creating their life you know because they call in the shots but why are they doing that because they play in the role to help us see that this is not what it is this is not what it um you know, because straight away, most people will have a rejection towards that. They will feel suppression that if somebody else, you, especially once you are an adult, I mean, children don't like it either, but especially if you are an adult and another adult will tell you that, hey, you, you need to do this, you know, and like a lot of people don't like it, you know, like, I mean, if you, if you have a healthy self-respect towards yourself and somebody else will tell you what you should be doing and how you should be doing it, then, you know, I'll question it. Like, hey, I'm, I'm a grown-up person, you know, like I have my own authority. Why should I, you know, do what you tell me to do, right? And again, there is no right and wrong. And a lot of people try to help, okay? And a lot of people even try to help from the subconscious point of view where they don't even know that, well, maybe this is not even helpful because then it goes back to, are we taking, are we, are we giving our power away? Because if I need someone else to tell me what to do and how to do it, or tell me that, well, I'll do it for you, then how will I ever learn? Like, it's different when we have guides, you know, guides and somebody to, to show you how to fish, right? 
But every time if somebody gives you the fish, how are you ever going to learn how to fish, right? So it's the same with this archetype of Capricorn, which we are experiencing and it's all tied in together. It's all tied in together because we will never feel safe and secure inside of us to take the authority over our life if we don't heal that wound. Because that wound is, um, you know, and this is something that I received from my inner child healing course, the wound wired you up for this um, nervous system response, which in many cases for major, majority people is the sympathetic nervous system. This continuous flight, fight, this continuous like, oh my God, there is a danger, it's going to eat me. You know, like there is this, this fear, you know, like war, you know, scarcity, money problems. I, am I going to be able to eat? What's going to happen with my whatever job? You know, there is always something to worry about, always fear mongering, fear porn out there, you know, which is like... <laughs> I mean, it makes no sense from a human perspective because why would we design a society that makes us feel afraid all the time? Well, why would we? Because obviously the soul decided, well, it's time to learn from this. Well, how are we going to learn? We're going to make it so extreme until we just can't do it anymore, you know, to be this way, to, to carry on this way. So we actually start questioning and we heal that fear within us that say you can't do it. Why couldn't you do it? You know, you're not, no better or worse than anybody else. If that person can do it, so can even anybody else. And that's why a lot of people that achieve things, they will tell you, if I could do it, you could do it. And this is why I'm telling you. Because majority of people, normal people, they didn't get where they are by having easy life. You know, the most influent, the most motivational people, I mean, even actors, a lot of actors, they had to go through hell. You know, they had to do all these, uh, you know, like... Um, small jobs and whatever and you know like so we only see the final result and we we look at that person and we put them on pedestal and see like oh yeah this is the perfection i want the same thing but i can't have it because whatever but actually majority of the people that achieved something they didn't get there through easy you know they had to also face their fear and um conquer you know these demons in their closet and whatever it is and then they can they can help others they can share and they can share and tell others well if i could do it you could do it and it's the hundred monkeys effect when somebody can do it then there are other people who can do it and this is what's happening this is why this theory of like well, well i'm just one person i can't change nothing you can you can change a lot because if you can heal that in yourself you're creating a ripple effect in the universe and then it makes it easier for everybody else to heal it. So that's why when people like feel like, oh, well, you know, it doesn't make sense to heal something that happened a long time ago. Let's just not even talk about it. There's no point or whatever. Or I mean, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it, but I hope that you understand what I'm trying to say. When one person can do it, everybody can do it. So at the moment, what we can see is, you know, the polarity of that. Well, if nobody can do it. You know, look at that, you know, that person stood up and they were imprisoned or whatever. I don't know, you know. So that's why it's so essential for us to start with ourselves, because if you can do it and you conquer your fear and you push past that resistance and, you know, um, allow that healing to take place and be integrated, then so can somebody else. And this is what's create the ripple effect. It can change everything. And this entire year of Capricorn is about taking your power back, stepping into your own authority about redefining the reality we are existing in. And actually, does this still hold a meaning with Saturn in Pisces? And for most people, it doesn't. But we still continue the same experience because we don't know how else, because nobody showed us. But well, maybe if you don't see it, maybe you're the one to start. Maybe you're the one to create it. You know, if, if you just have... Uh, you know, one thing to offer you, you, you know, like if you few steps ahead of someone else with your experience or your knowledge, you have something to teach the person behind you to pull them up. And this is how we're going to, you know, co-create. This is how we're going to change things. One, one person at a time, one healer at a time, one healing at a time. And in essence, like I mentioned previously, Human beings, people are actually good. You know, there is, I mean, depends which walls you fall, feed, of course, but in essence, people want to help. You know, they want to be of, of a service. They, they want to be happy and they want to see other people happy. I mean, there are not many people in the world who can just be happy and checked out and look at other people struggling. Majority of people, they, you know, when they see other people being in a difficult situation, they have compassion. They want to help. They're like, okay, what can I do? How can I help? You know? 
the best way you can help is to start from yourself to heal these aspects of ourselves which you know i'm not saying this is in everyone but collectively there are aspects uh, of ourselves that are unhealed which is why they've been manifested in the way we see them being manifested and it's also the main aspect of it is this complete disconnection you know this complete disconnection from oneself and then that's what we see in the world this complete disconnection with one person looks at another and and you know and they don't uh, reson they not this resonate they cannot feel what the other person feel because they feel that they separate it has nothing to do with them and and this is like this is something that you know a lot of people are experiencing even in their personal life even i'm experiencing this in certain uh, you know circumstances because there was that disconnection that disconnection when certain part of me had to be shut down but then when we shut down, you know, like uh, how we feel towards something, then it impacts everything else because these emotions have to be flowy. And there's actually something which um, Teal Swan was talking about in her video on YouTube today about these emotions, like how we need to feel because emotions are coming to give us messages. And if we suppress them or if we just distract ourselves because it's too scary, then the emotion didn't pass on the message we were supposed to experience because we're running away from it. And that's why we are like now living in this overstimulated world world which as we know everything can be used in you know multiple different ways and internet for me personally definitely accelerated everything for me because you know there is all these sources of information and it just helps you to to um to learn what you need to like you know learn to remember what you already know so there are all these tools available for us to actually be able to remember what you already know to tap into yourself but then we can see the shadow aspect of it this continuous overstimulation and um, bombardment of information and then obviously the manipulation when we are being swayed in certain direction by certain narrative and then that creates certain emotional response which is again the trauma response the sympathetic nervous system response because we don't feel safe and secure we don't feel safe and secure within ourselves so then when things that are than being you know mirrored to us from the external environment it just trigger that uh, that unhealed aspect of ourselves that doesn't feel safe and secure and also like i said in many cases most people are actually not living life in accordance with their needs and values and their authentic self version of self if they know what that is so then again all these things get triggered because it takes us back in times where you know, our ancestors couldn't do that either, you know, like they did, they couldn't exactly go there and have a chilly good life if that's not the environment they were born into because they were being conditioned by the environment that this is the load, this is what you were born into and this is, this. that's it, you know, like I'm sure many people, you know, like especially in the previous generation, I know my grandparents, you know, were, were being told that you, you born poor, you die poor, you know, like this is how it is, you know, that's your destiny and stuff and we know it's just a story, but our uh, somatic system, our body, it, it still believes it. It's the same with the child. Like, you know, and I can definitely, um, like I experience this all the time, you know, like on a uh, spiritual or mental level. Like, yeah, I understand. I totally understand the higher meaning, the deeper meaning, the reasoning, you know, the logical explanation. But obviously my inner child doesn't, you know, it still feels stuck in time when she was God knows how old, three years old, five years old, and it, she didn't feel safe because of whatever. So then when situation happens external of me or something that I have a response trigger towards, you know, and then it takes me back in time and I, I don't feel safe or I feel like, okay, I need to shut down to protect myself or whatever, you know, this, all these things, all these subconscious things which are becoming conscious to us. And this is what this Capricorn is saying to us, that it's time for us to redefine our reality by actually having the tangible experience of that which is hiding in our subconscious, which now doesn't work. It doesn't hold a meaning. We came to the end of the cycle. Saturn is in Pisces. Neptune is in Pisces. We, Pluto is in 29 degrees. Still, Pluto Sun are going to have a conjunction on 29 degrees, 59 minutes. This year is the end. Is the end of, of, of us being able to carry on with the same patterns. Is the end. Because Pluto is moving into Aquarius. Aquarius will fracture everything. It will decentralize everything. There'll be no pattern. 
in Aquarius there is no pattern there is no repeated pattern everything is everything is you know like it's like an electricity it could be anything whatever you know so that's why this year is 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 the is the is the preparation but it's the final push at the same time which is why the new moon was paradoxical because it's a new moon seeding of a new intention okay what do you want to experience what do you want to create but everything was 29 degrees closing phase saturn in you know saturn as the ruler pisces you know all these closing phases closing 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 and then obviously the square between mercury and neptune last quarter square crisis in consciousness and neptune what are we dissolving venus going to make a square to neptune i believe is next week it's going to be right before she moves into the sign of capricorn obviously um yeah it's next week on the 19th so yeah what are we letting go of but we need to know what brought us where we are so that's what i've been really processing this week and i know that i might be all over the place because this is what i'm trying to understand but again i'm trying to understand it with my brain and my brain doesn't understand because because it's all the program it's all the conditioning it's all the shutdown and you know like this resistance and like no i don't want to deal with that what you mean but because collectively we didn't want to deal with it we keep repeating the same patterns we keep having the same experiences collectively even though yes we're living in a different world like, like to hope much more civilized and you know less barbaric and stuff but these patterns these patterns of division and separation and this bloodthirst because you are wrong and I'm right, therefore I'm above you and I'm superior to what you want or what you believe, this is a pattern of the past. This is the pattern that runs deep in our human psyche and in our somatic experience, in our bodies that says that there is this separateness. And even though we all came here have uh, have to unique experience we are part of the collective but even though we are part of the collective and part of the source you still came here to have your unique experience and be authentic so that's what i mean everything is actually true and lie at the same time everything is happening simultaneously there are all these timelines literally happening simultaneously which is why it's becoming more and more challenging to put things into words because the more i feel for me it literally feels like somebody's stretching my brain or like you know not, i don't know if brain but the consciousness and everything is becoming so vast you know so like everything you know and it's just like very difficult to actually pinpoint what is that thing what is that thing that i'm trying to be focusing on because there are so many things happening at the same time there are so many things that we are focusing on and life is still going on you know with the chop wood carry water every every day things are still happening you know despite that there are big things happening and there are there are things happening internal of you and we're trying to figure it all out at the same time and most of the time we're trying to figure it out with our head if with our ego mind which only knows what it knows what already accumulated through the experience and then the body respond to it like, oh, yeah, I remember this trauma or I remember this conditioning or I remember this whatever, you know. And then, yeah, and then we have the full picture like, oh, OK, so it must be so. But this is literally what we are redefining this year. We are redefining this because by the end of the year, the new moon in Capricorn will be with Pluto in Aquarius. And we have two full moons in Capricorn in summer. So let's see what we're going to be illuminated about by then. And then another thing that became very conscious to me was that, um, okay, let me see if I can put it into words so it makes sense. So the other thing that became very like conscious is with regards to this, uh, well, there are two things really. So one of them is this uh, trust, because this is something I struggle with, controlling trust, which was brought to my consciousness. And it's true, because we feel like we need to have all the answers and we need to know everything, you know, in order to feel safe, right? And now how do we feel safe, you know, if our safety depends on the external? But then how do you focus on your internal if you don't feel safe within the world? So it's like a catch-22, like how do we really resolve this situation and this is where this you know this is where <laughs> this is where the disconnection comes in because we've been and i personally definitely have this pattern i feel disconnected you know i feel disconnected there are aspects of me that feel disconnected and it's also this disconnection from the spirit 
actually having this knowing that we are part of everything, that my higher self is still me and it's got my back and universe has my back. And, you know, I can trust. I can trust that no matter what takes place, uh, I am, you know, divine being. And, you know, I can never be really harmed because this is just an experience, but still not... Um, suppressing my emotions and uh, gaslighting myself into thinking that I am not having this experience because it's an illusion. Well, you are having a three-dimensional three human experience because you're in a human body, but everything is taking place at the same time. So this is what I'm saying, that like we are learning to hold all these multiple ways or like yes i'm a divine being you know like yes i come from the spirit and spirit is still me it's within me it's all connected but at the same time i'm a, I'm a human being and i feel disconnected and i feel misunderstood or i feel separate or whatever and all of this is happening at the same time and now where do we even start and we start with connecting with ourselves how can we connect with ourselves we need to go through all this healing of the past because that's what created the disconnection. It started long time ago. You know, that's what I always say. It didn't start with you, but you can change it. And this is definitely which I'm experiencing that, well, I need to change it. You know, like I cannot change my parents. I cannot change my family. But I can change it within me, this pattern. So I don't have to ca carry this suffering, you know, waking up every morning and feeling and feeling upset, feeling sad. And I'm like, what am I feeling sad about? You know, and my life is good. What do I have, you know, to feel sad about? But there is something which I'm carrying that, you know, is, is my own unhealed version of myself, aspect of myself, but also something that came long before me that been passed on to me, this sadness from what came before that I have the opportunity to heal. So these that already are gone and sacrificed, many of them sacrificed themselves and their life for, for this next generation, because that's what I'm sure most people heard saying their parents said that, well, we, we want you to have better life than we had, you know, and we're just going to sacrifice so you can have it. But how can the frequency of sacrifice can attract and create anything other than a frequency of sacrifice, which is why I can see this pattern very clearly in my family, this pattern of suffering and sacrifice. And I don't know how people who say this to their children that I'm going to sacrifice myself so you don't have to. But then there is this frequency and pattern that is being passed on to the next generation, which say, OK, well, my mother did it. I have to do it. And then next and then next and then next. And this is how it goes. So then there is somebody born into the family who say, well, I don't want to sacrifice. And then they may, may, may feel guilty. And even though they're not going to sacrifice like me, for example, you know, I chose a very different lifestyle from my family. But I still carry this wound. I still wake up in the morning feeling sad and feeling the sadness of the previous generation that had to sacrifice. And they saying, hey, you need to heal this. You need to shift this because how else do you want to live a life where you don't carry this burden, where you don't feel this need to sacrifice or suffer or be sad and then subconsciously then sabotage your relationships or, you know, opportunities for happiness and put yourself in a prison of your mind. And there is all this perpetuation of suffering. And this is what's happening on an individual level. And that's then what creates the collective. And that's what we then see manifested. This perpetuation of suffering and sacrifice and uh, this prison created by our minds. So it's like, this is what I mean. And it's so hard for me to articulate it. And maybe it's just me, obviously, not knowing how to talk. But it's just like, because I am being, the, the more I'm tapping into these things, the more I'm being like unveiled these vast concepts, but I'm really struggling how to bring them to earth, like how to help people understand what I'm trying to explain that I see. I, I'm not saying this is going to obviously be helpful or for an interest to everyone. I'm just trying to share what's been coming up for me. And I know this is so strongly connected to this Capricorn because it all starts with that. You know, it's all this quality of a, you want to create your reality. You have a certain vision of what you w want your life to be. But then you have all these buts, you know, and I know that from myself that people say, well, you can change it. You can do this. You can do that. You know, you could learn that. You could make this change. La, la, la. But there is all this but. But, but, but. But I can't. But this, but that. I don't have time. But this, you know, and all these buts, you know, all these things that are holding us back. But you don't understand. But I don't have the luxury. But all this, you know, because it's safer. Because that butt just keeps us small, you know, it keeps us in a box and it like, gives this something, whether it's a person, circumstance, experience, memory, external authority. 
It's that something external of you, which is in charge, that but, you know, that is in charge. So right now, being in 2024, the year number eight, ruled by Saturn and Jupiter, and having four Capricorn lunations, will be challenged on that, on that but. <laughs> because if we want to have the, if we want to experience the reality we want to experience, if we want to manifest the reality we are visioning for ourselves individually and collectively, but everything is connected, obviously, somebody needs to take the charge, somebody needs to take the responsibility, and it's you, it's you, 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 everyone for their own life. And then together, from this point of self empowerment and healing our wounding, which it's a it's a it's a continuous lifelong process. It's not like oh yeah, I'm done forever. You know, like that's what I mean. Even the highest spiritual teachers and guides and stuff, they still processing their own things because it's not just your own individual thing. It's everything that came before, whether it's from your bloodline or your country's bloodline or the entire human collective and God knows what, multiverse, everything, because we all tapped into the same thing. So all this is being healed at the same time, which is, you know, like this, uh, like more mature soul, if you can say that. But I mean, at the end of the day, all the souls are, you know, equal. But some people put so much on their plate. They're going through so many experiences and they're like, oh my God, I don't know why all this is happening to me. Well, because you are a strong soul and you can obviously do it. And by you doing it, because you're not going to give up, you're going to then create this ripple effect, which at this time and age, when everything is accelerated and there is an opportunity to uh, correct all these things in one one go, you know, like we, we don't have to be born for another, I don't know how many generations to be still dealing with the same pattern. Now with Pluto in Aquarius and all these energies that are pre present at the moment, there is an opportunity to burn the karma of the past so we can start with the clean slate and move in this new direction with Saturn and Neptune moving into Aries within the next two years. Like we, we are entering a completely different world, but there is still so much of the of the old world present and that's why that is becoming so conscious to us especially this year and that's why i know i keep saying the same thing but that's why so many things are becoming more and more conscious and obvious and thrown in our face because it will be opportunity for us to to see what we potentially don't want and then how do we create something that we want well, well we have to trust ourselves we need to believe in ourselves and do we because that inner child if it wasn't nurtured and felt safe and secure it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't, which is why so many people are afraid to make a change. Because we are being made feel that, well, it's not safe. And then if you feel unsafe and, you know, not secure in your own home, in your own self, then where, where can we go from there? I mean, you know, there is a square between Mars and Car Cancer and Mars in Capricorn, right? So, yeah, so there is definitely a lot. There is so much unpacking, and I know for me, myself, I, I, I know what I need to do. I mean, I channel for myself, write messages, and, uh, you know, this is what I've been confirmed. You know what to do. Like, all of us know what to do. The knowing is within you. Now, whether we listen to it or whether we do something about it or not, that's up to you. That's your free will choice. That's why every time I say to my client who get too hung up on their chart and like, oh, my God, I'm experiencing this because I have this in my chart. So I'm doomed for life. No, you're not. No, you're not. This is the energy that you brought with you to, to work with. But, you know, like how are you going to use it? It's up to you. You know, and then with your North Node as an evolutionary potential, this is something you're walking towards. But if you're going to get there, how you're going to get there and what you're going to learn in the process, it's up to you. You know, your chart is not your prison sentence. Your chart is just, uh, you know, when you put stuff on your plate, what you're going to eat. So the soul decides, okay, let me dish out this on my plate and see if I can handle it or how I'm going to handle it or what am I going to do with it, all these ingredients or whatever, what am I going to cook from it, you know, so that's how it is. So that's why there are so many things potentially showing up for you. And there are so many things showing up for us all, you know, from the collective. And yeah, and the other thing which I forgot to say was that I think the because because everything is happening at the same time. And I know that, well, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to focus on the negative. I need to focus on the positive. And then they say, well, if you focus just on the positive and not on the negative, then you're spiritual bypassing. And again, we are multidimensional being and the multidimensionality of our world and our being and our experience is becoming very obvious to us by this stage. So what I was 
like feeling and tapping into is well it depends where you put the main focus you know so everything happens everything exists at the same time you know yes there is this stuff is happening you know and i'm we not pretending it's not happening it is happening it is happening on a tangible and you know people are in that situation having an experience and that creates ripple effect that ex- you know other people are having different experience from the ripple effect but now where do you put your main focus on because i can hold the frequency like i know this is happening but i'm choosing not to put my it, my 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 prana my life force into that but also at the same time as i'm putting my attention and my life force into my life and my experience i still know this is happening but for a lot of people it's like where are you putting your focus where are you putting your energy and it's not like and again because of the libra balance like it's not one or the other it's all of it it's all of it happening at the same time so having the awareness that yes this is happening why is it happening but also having the awareness of the human experience this make me feel this way and these are the emotions i'm experiencing and these emotions are making me feel this way and why and what is it remind me of and what am i running away from or what am i not wanting to uh, you know experience pay attention to and then it keeps coming back you know coming back to the surface so that's what i mean it's so there is so much happening there are so many layers to everything that's happening in a human collective and in our own personal individual experience right now it it's like it's like i don't even know where to start so that's why as always at the end of my video i i don't know whether i was able to articulate what i'm feeling and what i'm experiencing and what i'm processing in my own little microcosm over here I don't know whether I was being able to bring it through in a way that makes sense to other people, but I just hope that uh, it will resonate it, at least, you know, with someone and perhaps gives you the validation and understanding of what's happening and why. But at the same time, it doesn't mean don't feel what you feel in your experience just by putting a spiritual plaster on it, a um, band-aid and saying, oh, yeah, there is a deeper meaning in this. Or, you know, being over-consumed with the human experience and you say, oh my God, I don't have time to be spiritual right now. You don't know what I'm going through. But we need to learn to hold all of it. Hold all of it. Like, yes, I'm having a human experience. This is how I feel. And I'm present with how I feel. But at the same time, I'm a multidimensional being. I'm a divine being having a human experience. And this is the reason why it's happening. And this is the deeper meaning behind it. But it doesn't negate how I'm experiencing it. So this is where we really being like cracked open with the Uranus trying in this moon, trying in this full moon, new moon in cancer. Uh, can, I don't know why I keep saying cancer and full moon, new moon in Capricorn number one. Try, there was a trine from Uranus because Uranus is cracking us open. It's literally like breaking us apart for us to see that you are multidimensional beings that are creating the whole which is the source, which is that all that ever was and that ever is and ever will be, right? But it doesn't make it any less or more because it's all part of the same thing. So anyway, I feel I'm just going to be diving into completely different direction here. So I'm going to leave it at that. But yes, if this was a crazy week for you, even though, I mean, I know things been happening in the world, but, you know, in my my world, things were not necessarily happening in my everyday reality, but there is so many moving parts, and all these parts are bringing so many things to the surface of my consciousness, which I knew were like, oh, yeah, this makes sense, I was aware of that, but I wasn't, and now it's like, okay, I'm starting to understand, and I'm starting to, like, create the willpower <laughs> to generate this life force and intention and will and desire that, okay, I need to change this. Something needs to be done about this because I don't want to spend the rest of my life as a prisoner of my own conditioning and past. Because everybody deserves to set themselves free from that. And that's the Aquarius, your liberation, right? So this year is going to represent that going through the mud of the past because that is part of co-creating the new it's all happening simultaneously so anyway guys this is it this is my practical application of astrology i hope it made sense and i'll be making my astrological forecast tomorrow so if if you are looking for that stay tuned and i wish you all a beautiful weekend thank you all for your support if you're still watching thank you so much for your time and i'll speak to you again soon bye for now